Hello students, today we will discuss about conjugate foci method. What is conjugate foci? That if you take a lens and place an object in front of it, then you get the image on the other side of the lens. Now, if I take a convex lens for the sake of simplicity and place an object in front of it at a certain distance say u, then the image is formed at the other side at a distance say v. Now, can I get the same image? Can I get the image at the object? That means where now the object is. Can I get the image at this point initially where the object is placed? If I treat the image from there as my object, then we have to obviously see the lens. What I will say is, if this is a lens and the object is here, the image is formed here. So this is object distance, this is the image distance. Now, if I consider treat this image as the object and I place shift the lens somewhere near the image formed and let us treat the image formed due to the lens one as the object for the lens two, then the image where it is formed, if the image is formed exactly where the object was earlier, then these two distances are called conjugate distances. The positions to these two positions of the lenses are called conjugate positions. So that means the conjugate focus. The plural form of focus is foci. So let us uh, see with the help of uh, a diagram what is happening with the conjugate foci method. Now, I consider a lens here. This is a straight line. I <coughs> place an object over here. Say this object is uh, called O O S. Now, where the image will be formed? The image uh, will be formed like this. I will consider two rays, one ray like this, like this, and uh, we know that uh, rays coming parallel to the lens will pass through the focus. Suppose uh, I consider this as the focus. If I consider this as the focus, then the ray will pass like this from the focus and if I draw one more line over here it will meet somewhere here this is the second line this is the first ray so this is where the image is formed this is called I I dash <coughs> now I have drawn very close to each other so look carefully otherwise it will be difficult for you to understand now, here the image is formed. This distance is the object distance. I call this as uh, u. This is my u. Or to distinguish, I will call this as e1. And uh, this distance is v1. e1 is the object distance, v1 is the image distance. This is how it goes like this. Now, the question is, if I shift this Mirror, uh, lens towards this object. If I shift this lens towards this image formed, that means I will use another lens or I can have the same lens, shift it. Can I get, uh, if I place an uh, a lens over here, can I get the image of this over here? If that is so, then these two position, positions of the, these two positions. Suppose that uh, I say that I have a position like this, I shift this lens or I have another lens like this, suppose this lens is L1, this lens is L2, then for this lens, if I can get the image exactly over here, how can this be possible? Let us say, I will just do like that only, let us say, 
this is the red diagram this is how crop channel goes for this and the one uh, I can take uh, directly from here and get here. Suppose this is how it is formed. Then these two positions are called perfect focal positions. Now what happens here is if we measure, obviously we will measure the object distance here. Now this is the object distance and this is the image distance. Now this is the image distance uh, V2. V2. And this is of the distance u2. It has been found that the object distance and the image distance are exchanged. That means let us see in another form that if I have a lens here, okay, an object here. Suppose that the image is formed here. Okay, this distance I note as suppose x. This distance I note this distance as y. Okay. Now I will not change these two places. I will just keep on moving the lens. Now again, what I'll do, I will just in place of this position, I'll shift the lens away from the object suppose I bring it somewhere here and the object is still there object is not moving then again I will have the image if I get the image at the same position same position but this time the image is uh, diminished little bit smaller in size here <coughs> it hasn't found that this distance was only x and this distance was y now the object distance becomes the image distance so therefore this will become x the image distance here will become the object distance here so this becomes y so they are exchanged the positions of the object distance and the image distance are exchanged then this is called conjugate focal method so if in conjugate focal method an interesting thing happens that if you want to find the image uh, 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 size of the image or size of the object you can find it out suppose that uh, um, because in this right tri triangle triangle and this, this is one right angle triangle this is another right angle triangle these two angles are same so i can have uh, the ratio of this side by this side tan of this angle and tan of this angle will be same so this side by this side suppose that image height is i the object uh, height is o then i'll write uh, o by x is uh, i by y Similarly, for this case, I will write uh, O by Y equals to, but obviously this side will be different. So, it's I dash, I dash by X. So, you can see here that uh, uh, I can write, uh, if I write like that, X by Y I is O. From here, X by Y O is I dash. If I divide this to continuation of conjugate foci if i divide this to or uh, or if i rather multiply what will let us see what i'll get if i multiply this x by y i uh, into x by y o equals to o i dash so, uh, either I will divide it some other way because it will get too complicated. Let us divide to cancel it out. If I divide it, x by y, x by y will cancel out. What will get? I by O is O by I dash by division. This is what you get by multiplication. If I divide, I will get this. Then after that, what I will get? I will write here what I got I by O O by I dash so I'll write I I dash is O square now O square is I I dash that means O is on the root of I I dash what is that this means that 
the object size if it is found to be if the, sometimes in case of young's double slit experiment uh, in uh, interference uh, when you talk about fresnel's pipe region experiment you have the uh, object which is virtual object so in case of a virtual object the or size of the object is uh, to be found using conjugate foci method because you cannot find the virtual uh, uh, distance so therefore to find this virtual distance we take the use of the uh, real image found so this real image i and uh, i dash can be found using uh, traveling microscope so this distance i can find this distance i can find so i don't know this distance so how to find this distance there is a relation that uh, o can be found as under root of i and i dash this is a uh, uh, virtual object and uh, these two are real images okay so we can find uh, uh, this you can use this uh, method conjugate focal method to find uh, the size of the virtual object and let me tell you one more thing here where it is applied here we can apply application is there in uh, Fresnel's by prism experiment to find uh, the wavelength of light you know, that uh, Fresnel's by prism experiment is conducted to find the wavelength of light used in uh, interference pattern okay so this is how it is Thank you.